you do sacrifice so much as a footballer, but what you get back in return um, is something that you just, you never thought that you'd be able to experience. <laughs> There's some moments throughout your career that nothing else can replicate. I started playing football in my older brother's club team. I'd go along and watch him play football and that's where I fell in love with the game and yeah, just continued to play at club level. And then when I was 14, uh, I was invited to train with the QAS. And then, yeah, that's sort of where it, it got pretty serious for me. I was never the most skillful footballer or talented footballer, but I was definitely one of the, the harder working players in my younger years and probably had the discipline at a young age that, that really set up the rest of my career. I think my family as well definitely instilled a lot of that dedication and the commitment of, of what it takes to, to be an athlete at a, at a young age. You know, we're a hard-working family and we take nothing for granted and I think that's, yeah, it's just been, a, as you say, ingrained in me but also the way I was brought up and um, the early influences in my career. And Di Allegic was probably a big one for me. Um, she was a defender and just like so dependable, reliable, solid as a rock and you know, I just wanted to, to defend like die. And she passed her number four onto me. That's why I wear number four. So it's, it holds a, little, a special place in my heart. And yeah, the closer I get to the end, I'm like, oh, now I have to you know, pass that jersey on to someone else and keep that tradition going. You know, being an elite footballer is, it's tough and it's not as easy as just rocking up on the weekend and playing 90 minutes. You know, we spend a lot of time away from home, um, away from your family, away from your friends. So there's a lot of things outside the football pitch that can definitely create a lot of challenges for, for players. But it's, yeah, something I, I wouldn't change for the world. Claire Polkinghorn with the number four, her number four jersey, will represent her country for a record 152nd time. Any time you, you get to walk out there and represent your country, it's, yeah, it, you definitely don't get sick of it. And it's special every single time. Just the, the response and the support that we've had from um, our fans and supporters walking out into a packed stadium and singing the national anthem, it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Got the initial header, now Polkinghorn, and that's two! Back-to-back -back goals for the record woman, Claire Polkinghorn. Yeah, from early on, we've definitely taken the responsibility upon ourselves to drive change or fight for things that we needed for this team. So it's probably been something that we've always had to do is battle for ourselves and for each other and you know, with the sole purpose of moving this team forward. And I think that's something that we've, we've definitely done pretty well as a group and it definitely has strengthened the bond that, that we have in, in the team. What a finish! The Matildas are on fire! I mean, there's so much that makes me proud. Being part of the Matildas for so long, we've We've been through some really good times and, and some really tough times and probably the highs and the lows are the things that stick with you the most because they're the, I guess, the most emotive part of being a footballer. But yeah, it's the everything in between is special too because it's just like you spend so much time with your teammates and it's, it's nice that we're part of such a good group um, and it makes being away from home or whatever it is so much more enjoyable because you're all fighting for the same thing and when you achieve it, it's very, very rewarding. <laughs>